Hello friends, this video on Neural Control and Coordination Part 17 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So what does the inner part help to do? So the axons form the inner part. So and that is why it's, uh, only a small portion inside is white in color. Rest of the outer portion is gray and which has got all the association areas in it. Now let us look at the next important portions of the forebrain that is the thalamus and hypothalamus. So what do they do? So thalamus is a midline symmetrical structure of the two halves. So if you see, I mean this is the side view of the uh, brain. But if you actually see from the back, the, these are the two cerebral hemispheres. So somewhere along this midline structure, you can actually find the small structure called the thalamus. It is located between the cerebral cortex and the midbrain. So this is the midbrain. This is where the midbrain starts. And where is the cerebral cortex? The outer layer of the cerebrum. So in between these two, somewhere here it is located. It is the coordinating center for sensory and motor signaling. So any sensory or uh, motor information that can be controlled at this place. Next is the hypothalamus. It is a structure which is located at the base of the thalamus, somewhere here, base of the thalamus. And it contains a number of centers to control body temperatures, urge, emotions, etc. Now, several emotional reactions, for example, a feeling of uh, happiness, pleasure, fear, anger, or excitement. So, all such feelings are controlled by uh, these. So, for example, sometimes you feel thirsty, you have that urge to drink something, or you feel hungry. So, all these kind of feelings are actually controlled by uh, these parts of the forebrain. In fact, hypothalamus also is involved in producing or in secreting several hormones. Now, when we talk about the endocrine system, we will talk about the various glands which produce several hormones. So, there we will talk about hypothalamus and we will see what are the hormones which are produced by hypothalamus and how those hormones play a very important role in maintaining balance in our body. So, this is all about thalamus and hypothalamus. And then the olfactory lobes of the forebrain. As I said, these are present in the bottom side of the brain. That means towards the other side of the brain. They are the center of smell. However, they are not very well developed in human beings. Whereas in case of animals like dogs, these olfactory lobes are very highly developed. So they can actually interpret the smell. In, see, for human beings, you have a sensory organ for um, which acts as olfactor receptor that is the nose so we can smell things but we are not very good at interpreting the smell it now the olfactory lobes are not very well developed doesn't mean that human beings cannot smell things good so human beings have the ability to smell anything and everything due to the presence of the sensory organ called nose but interpretation of that smell depends on how developed the that particular region of the brain is now this olfactory lobes are not that developed in human beings that is why just by the smell we cannot uh, detect a lot of things maybe sometimes some of the dishes smell are like very familiar with us so we can uh, say just with the smell we can say that okay this is being prepared in your house so that's because this scent, these olfactory lobes are present. It is not that they are not present, but they are not very well developed. But in case of dogs, they are very well developed. That is why you would have seen that the policemen and all, they, they keep the dogs with them. So that they help them to catch thieves and all. Because they have got very uh, well developed olfactory lobes. So just with the smell itself, they can actually recognize people. They can recognize criminals. So that means uh, it is extremely developed in case of dogs. So this is the olfactory lobe and I think that is all about the forebrain. So let us now move ahead with the midbrain. So let us now talk about the midbrain. So midbrain is that portion of the brain which is located in between the forebrain and the hindbrain. So basically it connects the forebrain and the hindbrain. To be more specific, it is located between the thal between the hypothalamus of the forebrain and the pons of the hindbrain. Now, hypothalamus we already saw that is the 
that is that part of the forebrain which is located at the base of the forebrain towards the end of it. So between that hypothalamus and the pons of hindbrain. Now hindbrain parts we will see in the next slide. It is associated with vision, alertness, sleep or wake situations. So all these things are associated with the functions of the midbrain. So it also contains a lot of cranial nerves that stimulate muscles which controls the movement of the eyeballs and the eyelids. So let us look at the structure of the midbrain. So this pink colored structure which you see in the picture that is the midbrain. So this is midbrain. Now what are the different parts of the midbrain? Corpora quadrigemina, cerebral aqueduct, tegmentum and cerebral peduncles. So these are some of the important parts of the midbrain. So let us quickly look at each of these parts. So what are they? So first let us talk about corpora quadrigemina. So let us see what is corpora quadrigemina. The word quadri means four. So we will see what are they. The next is the cerebral aqueduct, then tegmentum and the cerebral peduncles. So first let us talk about corpora quadrigemina. So these are four lobe-like structures on the dorsal side. Quadri means four. Now since four of them exists, that is why it is quadrigemina. They are lobe-like structures, some swollen structures on the dorsal side of the midbrain that means towards the back side of the midbrain what is cerebral aqueduct it is a canal duct is always a tube like structure so it is a canal like structure which contains the cerebrospinal fluid we spoke about the cerebrospinal fluid and it passes through the uh, midbrain and then reaches the hindbrain so it connects the third and the fourth ventricles we spoke about the various ventricles in the first few slides right so this aqueduct wants to connect the third and the fourth ventricles and while doing so it passes through the midbrain tegmentum is forms the floor of the midbrain and here you can look at the different parts so here if you see this is the uh, cross section of the midbrain so here you can see tegmentum this is the floor of the midbrain and you can also see here some swollen structures and these swollen structures are nothing but the corpora quadrigemina and four of them exists here. You also have the cerebral aqueduct, aqueduct which is present at the center. If you see it is a tube like structures like this. So that is the cerebral aqueduct and then the cerebral peduncles. So what are they? These are paired structures on the ventral side. So you have the corpora quadrigemina on the back side and you have the peduncles that is also paired structures which are present on the inner side. So these are some of the prominent structures on the uh, which you can fi find on the midbrain. So if you Try to understand the structure of the midbrain in simple form. You can actually see that this, this is somewhat like this. This is how the structure is of the midbrain. So it has got these lobe-like structures, the and four lobe-like structures on the back side. These are the corpora quadrigemina. It has a central cerebral aqueduct which is a trichanal like structure which carries the cerebrospinal fluid. The floor of this is the tegmentum and it has cerebral peduncles which are paired structures and they are present on the ventral side that is on the inner side. So that is how the structure of the midbrain is. Now let us talk about the hindbrain. So hindbrain is like the last part of the brain. So first was the forebrain, then midbrain and then finally the hindbrain. So hindbrain consists of cerebellum. So please do not get confused with cerebrum. So cerebrum is a part of the forebrain. This, this structure is cerebrum. But cerebellum is a part of the hindbrain. And it provides space for more neurons. So more now it is a coiled structure. So here if you see this part is the cerebellum 
and if you see it has like a lot lot of folds and all so that provides more space for more neurons to be accommodated it coordinates all the voluntary movements and also helps to maintain the posture and the body balance so that is the purpose of cerebellum next is the pons so where is the pons located this is the pons so it contains the fiber tracts to connect different regions of the brain and the, it helps in respiration regulation and the last part that is the medulla oblongata which is also known as the brain stem so this is medulla oblongata or which is, and it is also known as medulla sometimes it coordinates the involuntary movements and it is connected directly to the spinal cord so from here only the spinal cord is getting connected so that means medulla oblongata connects the brain with the spinal cord and it is the regulatory center for uh, doing various activities like swallowing coughing sneezing vomiting respiration so all these are controlled by medulla oblongata so these are the various parts of the hind brain so by now i think we have covered almost the different parts of the brain and we also saw what is the function of each part of the brain so basically the brain looks so complex but if you actually dig down and see you will see that it has been divided into different sections and each section has to do its own job for example some part of the brain helps to control uh, activities like uh, say the sensory perception or some portion is for the uh, auditory perception some section some portion is to maintain the body balance some part is to regulate the respiration some part is for coughing sneezing etc so that means different sections of the brain does their own particular job thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.